Paolo, and uh, thank you for all of you to, uh, to be uh, uh, once again uh, together uh, online to, uh, to hear two new commissioners. But, and I know it, you, you have been extremely busy, but Paolo, I'm extremely happy that uh, we are here today, and I'm here today together with you. First, so am I. First, yeah. because tu parles très bien français. You speak French very well. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and do my presentation in French. The real reason is that uh, I think we can say this. Before you, ladies and gentlemen, you have two commissioners who have uh, been working together, working together very closely since the beginning of the crisis. We've really been working hand in hand. And... This is a, a moment uh, in this uh, tragic period that we're, we're going through. This is a very important moment, and our work together has allowed us to take a rational approach to the situation, and it's very important to remain rational, to understand the reality of what's happening at a time when everything is so uncertain, so new. Uh, so Paolo and I met as quickly as possible, and we said we have to try to take stock of the impact of this crisis. And Mr. Gentiloni's team has made up some of the best uh, economists there are, and I have uh, a certain knowledge of the market and of companies, and we said that we have uh, different approaches, uh, perhaps, a top-down approach for Mr. Gentiloni and his economists and a bottom-up approach for me and uh, with my experience of the internal market. But what's very important here, uh, well, here I would recall what Charles Michel, the president of the European Council, did. He, he called on the institutions to work together to reflect and to come up with a solution. We were looking at what was happening outside. We thought about public investment, private investment. We thought in terms of uh, how we could help to support European GDP. The European Council called on us to uh, have discussions and in the course of our discussions, we managed to find a convergent viewpoint between the macroeconomic viewpoint and, our, and the microeconomic viewpoint. And we managed to bring these two approaches together and come up with an instrument to help us calibrate our response. We were, after all, asked to come up with a recovery plan that would be up to the task. And uh, the work that we've carried out has not just been economic, it's also been, if I may say so, scientific, because we tried to be as rational as possible. And this is the approach that allowed us to come up with a plan that is up to expectations. Of course, we will move gradually out of the crisis. Uh, and this is based on the assumption that we won't have any more new peaks in infection. So something that was important to all the member states. And all this led to the presentation made by President van der Leyen. Uh, this was a, a historic moment because we're talking about turning to the markets to raise 720 billion euros. And as part of this program, we want to contribute insofar as possible to uh, the recovery of the market. So here we're thinking in terms of 10% of European GDP, the investment we want to make. So... Uh, really, a considerable effort is being made, and there's going to be a new window 
the strategic window in addition to the four you're already familiar with. In the current situation, we have to avoid the fragmentation of the internal market. This was the idea that guided us, and I'd like to say this with great emphasis at the moment. Uh, for those who uh, represent, who control our economy within the Eurozone, uh, the essential thing is to avoid a fragmentation of the market, to avoid uh, divergences. And uh, Commissioner Vestager talked about this this morning. Uh, of course, there are vulnerabilities, and there's the fragility, perhaps an artificial, temporary fragility of some of our important companies, our key companies, as concerns the sovereignty of the European continent. Of course, there's the area of health. This has been very clear, but we can think about all sorts of technologies, key technologies, uh, digital technologies, space technology. We can think about all the new technologies linked uh, to our very ambitious uh, green plan. We can think about all these technologies, uh, these rising technologies, and some of these sectors have seen uh, a drastic drop in their productivity during this period, and their capacity to invest for many of them has been uh, cut to zero. So we have to invest for their sake. And we're not just talking about large groups here. We're talking about SMEs, micro-enterprises, startups, but these are the companies of tomorrow. And we know that uh, we have to help them. We're not naive. We have to provide them with the means to protect the industry of tomorrow. Uh, and this goes hand in hand with the industrial project for the European Union. So this window consists of 31 billion euros in guarantees, as Paolo said, we think that this will give us a very uh, significant firepower of about 150 billion so that we can intervene directly. Uh, we can talk about the specific mechanisms when we get to the questions. All of this has been uh, closely studied with uh, the companies concerned right now, not only in terms of capital, equity, but also in the form of loans. Throughout this crisis, we've often said uh, during our discussions that there's been an acceleration of trends we've been seeing. That's true for digitalization. It's true for the environment, uh, for the Green Deal. It's true for issues of sovereignty. And we think that the time has come to think about our European project, not just as a vector of hard power, but also to think about it 